I uh, I want to share with you Sylvia's case in terms of the design process for her. So Sylvia is my latest newsletter here, and we took it from this to this. And, you know, how do I go about designing a partial denture to fill in all of these spaces and gaps? Well, I do it right at the first consultation. Once I've got all of these series of photographs, I don't take models. I don't have impressions made at all. I just do a prelim, a first design using these photos. Um, but the quality of the photos is really, really important. It just means... I want to see what's going to be on show. If we put a clasp on that tooth, is that going to be visible? How much space have I got to, you know, have we got space for putting the denture in here? What's going on? Now, this lady, she'd had Enronge, which is really in interesting. It's increasingly a problem with these long-term bisphosphonate patients. This, she had a tooth that was extracted at the local hospital and it developed into hemorrhage and it took ages for it to disappear. So these sorts of patients just don't want, we want to avoid extracting the teeth just to avoid any sorts of issues. So that's number one in, in my thought processes. She wants to keep these teeth for as long as absolutely possible. We want to avoid surgery. So implants are not a good idea for this these types of patients at all. So... Anyway, so once I've got these photos, I then um, use a design sheet just like this. So I'm just going to share also with you my um, website here, and you'll be able to have a look at this, and you can download various things from my website. I'm just going to slide this across here. So if you go to my website there and have it, just click onto resources, there and if you scroll down in the resources section you'll come across this aid memoir for scandinavian rpd designs so you can have a good look at that there so i'm not going to bring those across here so there's various things there so we've got universal designs for all different combinations of missing teeth interestingly um Sylvia is at number five. She's like a mirror image of this number five. And I I think that I just want her to keep all of these teeth. They're not in bad condition, these upper front teeth, but just to protect them, I think backings are better. So I've classed them as sort of dubious prognosis teeth. If you scroll up to this upper one here where we've got a good prognosis, that'd be the design for, for her if all of these teeth had really great prognosis. So we want to avoid any cost, these teeth coming out. So that's a really useful thing. Um, I've also got here a design sequence, and I'm just going to follow this all the way through now whilst I'm colouring in for, um, for Sylvia here, because I've got my design sheet ready just to, and my pens ready to go for it. Um, also, this design sheet here, here, which is brilliant, it's lovely, that me and John Besford have come up with. It's a really big sheet of paper, and it's got all of the teeth on, so you can just colour it in exactly how I want the denture design to look. So, so you can just download all of these from my website. So I've got the, that's the all combinations of missing teeth, so that's a cheat sheet. This is a design sequence for not missing out any important elements of the denture. And also this one here is the design sheet, which I've got here. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, bring me back to this. And I'm going to now just pull my screen down there so you can actually see I've got the design sheet here for Sylvia. I'll just move the microphone out of the way, just to that. And I've also got Sylvia's photos on here, so I can just have a quick look at these sorts of things and work out exactly um, which teeth we need to replace. So, first of all, what I do is I just take these letter set pro markers, which are fantastic, and then I'm just going to colour in which teeth are missing. So, and which ones do I need to replace? So, I'm going to colour in the ones that I'd want to replace for Sylvia. There. So this is what I do when I've seen the patient and I've got these photos ready. Um, 
in the in the surgery and quite often i'll do it whilst the patient's waiting um, and if whilst i'm looking at the photos working out a design sequence and then i can then work out exactly how many visits it's going to be and how much this treatment is going to cost too so that's the teeth that we're going to replace now i just want to see what she's got at the bottom too so she's also got lower teeth right at the back here there's one there on that lower left hand side there so she may need a tooth on the back of the venture just there like that too so this is how this is where looking at these photos is really really useful for the bite and seeing what's going on so she's got that there so she's got that upper that's a remaining upper molar and she's got this free end saddle situation just there so next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to draw in where the saddles are going to be so now i want to keep this the pink away from that bit there this corner that section there so it's going to look better aesthetically and bring this foot all the way back and what I'm thinking about with my partials is I always think of Fraser McCord, who was a terrific teacher of mine. And he always said, regard free and saddles just like complete dentures. There. So and so I'm going to extend it all the way around that tuberosity area there. Now, this bit here is a saddle section just there. So I'm just going to I keep, keep referring to my photographs here. And so I've got this that I can then just fill in that space there. Again, I'm keeping the pink away from that area. These are going to be retained, those roots. We're not going to take those out at all because they are, um, she's prone to having emronge. And she had that just there, this horrible necrosis that occurs when a patient has a tooth out. Um, I want to now just think about major connectors here. And I love the palette. The palette's always a great support for a denture. So I'm just going to bring that across just here like this. And I can just connect up that and that together there. And then right at the back here, the major connector is going to come all the way across here. And this is my center line. And I just like to just do a little curve like that. And then we can just sweep that in to this area here, just like that. So that's really nice. I'm just going to just click that a little bit more. My nice little pen I've got from Japan. Uh, lovely, just like that there. So it's superb. So that's my major connector. Now, I do want to generate some support for the denture from the surrounding teeth here. So... And I'm going to make this into uh, it's a partial denture stroke splint. So I'm going to draw on backings on these teeth. Now, these metal backings are fantastic for A, protecting these upper front teeth, and B, if a tooth is lost in the future, then a tooth can be added onto the denture just there. And what I'm trying to do is keep everything away from the gingival margins there. So there, and then this back tooth there, here, that's got quite a large MOD restoration in it. And the referring dentist, Stuart, said to me, look, it's it may have a little crack in it too, but we don't want it, we do not want that tooth to be extracted. So I'm going to put a ring wrap on it, a ring rest that just sits all the way over this there. So that just is going to sit over and protect that tooth there. So we've got various things here. We've got, we've replaced the saddle so far. We've got all of our supports. We've got a major connector in there. So we've got the overall shape of the denture there. Now, one thing that I don't have though is retention on this denture at the moment. So I need to draw on some clasps on here. So I just need to work out where the clasps are going to go. And in the upper, I want the clasps as far back as possible. So we've got this tooth here. That's the furthest 
distal tooth on that upper left hand side we've also got this molar just there and that so i'm going to clasp that molar there now i do like bringing these little gold clasps along the edge there like that and then we'll engage the uh, distal undercut of that tooth there now when this is where when this is where when you using the photos is slightly limited and I might need to refine my design once I've got the primary cast to look at. We can have a look at and see where undercuts are. So if there's no undercut just here, then we may need to put buckle composite to allow that clasp to engage that distal area of the tooth there. So that's it. Now, let's have a look on this other side here. But I want to clasp the canine. So let's just come further down. Let's have a look at Sylvia's smile there. So that's why these sorts of photos are super important. Getting the patient as grinning as much as possible. Even videos can really help with this. If I put an eye bar here, it's going to be hidden, you know, by the patient there. So I can just bring that across and over like this so that's my eye bar there so i can now start just color all of this in if you look at any of my designs too you'll see these x's on like on the cheat sheet that means a retentive clasp component there too so i'm going to now start to color everything in which is a nice and relaxing part of the whole process so and you know when i'm seeing a new patient I'll often see the patient for a consultation for one hour, sometimes an hour and a half. And I try and do the examination quite quickly and get that done in um, about 20 minutes, looking at the teeth. And then it gives me enough time to sit down without the patient looking over my shoulder. And I can then just draw out the denture design there. These are great, these letter set pens, these pro markers. I can just turn that around. Now, I could do this equally on the iPad. I've got this, you know, a pen on here using the same principle, but I just prefer actually colouring it in myself. It's just really nice. Lovely. So that's that. Beautiful. And I find with these, um, having the palette filled like this, and there's the other forms of palette. You can have the cutout section, the donut shaped palette, or the toilet seat uh, design. I don't like at all. I much prefer to have it filled, and then we can utilize this palatal support because that's that's not going to resorb and it's not going to go anywhere at all. So I have three different colors of pen of letter set colors so this is gray and um, is great for the metal work and then um, i've got this for the teeth which is a yellow color and also i'm going to use pink now for the um, gum work so i'll just color in that area just around there technicians love this so rowan my technician and uh, chris who does all of my metal work Chris Hesketh, um, they love these designs because it's just so totally clear. And it also goes into the patient notes too. I find it's a really nice educational tool for the patient as well. So they can, um, they understand the shape that the denture is going to be. One other, I think, really important aspect is to have just in the surgery are some examples of these dentures too. So the denture, the patient can pick pick them up, have a look at them before it's actually made. And then the other thing I love for here, which uh, is that this is a little gold pen, and I can then colour in these clasps. So these are the 0 0.9 millimetre gold wire like that and there. That's good. Now, because I'm going to talk about rest seats now underneath there, because now 
Sometimes I'll put composite rest seats on dentures. It's generally on lowers down here. It's a lower freehand saddle, not on uppers, because the patient will often have their, their overbite will be contacting at the front here. And so I don't really want to be jacking the patient open too much. I am going to be opening the patient's bite up a little bit on the whole of this denture. It's going to be a splint slash denture, but I don't want to jack it open too much. So in this case, I'm going to do some um, subtractive rest seats. So I'll colour those in there too. I'll just grab my pencil case here. Or I like to use this black marker here and do that there. So these are subtractive rest seats. And I'll put that on here. So subtractive rest seats on the upper three to three. That's how we chart that in the UK, upper three to three like that. So there. Now let's just have a look here, just at the bottom there. This is this is a side view, and I think this is quite important. This sort of side view just there too. Um, before I forget as well, we've got those overdenture abutments and roots there. I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to have the denture sitting on those areas just there like that. So okay. it's just going to have that there. I usually do these in green for some reason, the overdenture abutments. Like that. There. Right, let's have a look at the side views now. So this is looking from that section there. So we've got one, two, three, that's the canine. So this section here and is like that, just there. And the we've got the ring rest on that back tooth just there with the clasp coming like that. So I'm just going to do that in black. So we've got the ring rest. Often the other thing about these ring rests, they are they, they are fantastic in terms of stability for this type of area, but it's also super, super important just to double check in the smile that it's not going to show. Some patients show massive wall-to-wall -wall smile in the front there. And then, um, you know, if we go back to looking at that there, she doesn't show this, which is great. But if she did, I would be doing a circumferential clasp here just to engage the mesio buccal undercut and not have this metal section just visible in that area too. These are sorts of things that just details are really, really important in getting the whole denture looking dead good. So I'm just going to just go further back down to my photos where we have that side view there. So this is the area that we're going to be doing. So I'm just colouring in the T there that are... Missing. We've also got the overdenture abutment now. So this... This is where she's got a root underneath that four, underneath that first premolar. And so the denture flange needs to be ultra thin in that area or even cut away from that portion just there. So again, this is just really useful for the technician just to be thinking about the pink here, the transition between the two. Um, let's have a look on this side to now. So... That's one, two, three. And then we've got the saddle starting just there coming up. We've got to just be aware there may be some freenums up there and extend it all the way back. So we're going to replace the, all of these teeth because she's got that lower molar which she's going to bite on there. So I'm going to call her that in just like that. All the way along. So... That's great. Really, really good. Just there. And then I'm going to colour in the flange. So I like to keep the flange as far away as possible from that tooth there. So it's really it's knife edge. It blends in beautifully into the resorbed tissues. Just on that area. Just there. 
Oh, that all in there. There, that's that. And then finally, um, I just need to make sure that we've got the eye bar in the right place. So I want to keep it as high as possible. That's the clasp. So again, these are 0 0.9 millimeter wrought gold. You'll be able to see all of this there is you can just have a look at that I'll, I'll pop a link into the um into the youtube video so this is i just call that in the gold uh, like that and and i would definitely indicate here please so keep class as high as pos out of sight. Very important there. So that's it in a nutshell, all drawn. So this this will go in the patient's um, treatment planning letter. Um, and once I've got my primary cast, this would be refined then. So there may be certain features that, you know, Rowan can't do once we've had a look at the the cast there too so that's absolutely fantastic so all of this newsletter here of the this whole case from start to finish here you can just download and have a good look at that too and that shows the whole process behind this and the the design process for the denture here that comes in straight after i've done my consultation that anyway thank you very very much for listening bye for now bye bye